How's it everyone? This video expedition will analyze the B-17 heavy bomber formations and their groups as seen in Masters of the Air episodes transpiring during the Allied bombing campaigns of World War II deployed over German-occupied Western Europe. August 1943, the 8th U.S. Army Air Force, based in southern England, comprised two divisions of 750 heavy bombers. The 100th Air Group is equipped with 36 B-17s divided into four squadrons of nine aircraft each, the 349th, 350th, 351st, and 418th. The goal for each operational mission is to sortie 21 flying fortresses for raids over designated target areas. This was designed for each crew and plane to fly two out of three rotational missions, factoring in a 10% attrition rate for combat losses. These 21 bombers are split into three formations, a lead and lower squadron of six B-17s each, and a upper combined flight consisting that of nine. These were grouped into elements of three bombers each located in the lead and rear positions, with a center section in the upper squadron for a total of seven air group elements. Each B-17 mounted 11 50 caliber defensive machine guns to cover the fields of fire in the three-plane element formation, combined with the squadron's other additional flight elements. This formed three box formations of 66 to 100 guns each with a combined 232 overlapping fields of fire for the group's defensive capacity. Maintaining these tight formations were crucial for the bombers to fend off German interceptors. If one B-17 fell behind the squadron, it would be picked off by the enemy fighters, and the flight element would be down one-third of their defensive gun capability. The 100th is part of the 13th Bomber Wing with two other air groups, the 95th and the 390th. This large strike formation of 60 heavy bombers combines the nine squadrons into three group boxes and one large combined defensive area of 660 separate firing arcs. A joint combined task force of three air wings and 180 bombers can span over 10 kilometers of overlapping protective screens saturated with tens of thousands of 50 cal machine gun rounds defending these massive raiding armadas. Yet, even this impressive display of American aircraft mobilization was unable to prevent over 150 destroyed or damaged bombers in the last operation against Schweinfurt and Regensburg mounted deep inside German-controlled territory. The failed doctrine by U.S. military commanders in the belief that the bombers could defend themselves is now reaching alarming levels of concern for top Allied leaders. Long-range fighters to escort the bombers all the way to their targets and back would not be widely available until 1944. Six long months lay ahead for American bomber crews over Europe that would come to a forefront during the darkest days and the most costly week to date for the U.S. Army Air Force's heavy bombing campaigns. Large-scale raids are now becoming unsustainable. This will usher in an all-out combined air effort to cripple the German Air Force in what will become a new strategy to utterly destroy the Luftwaffe. If you enjoy this type of content, feel free to check out the channel's playlists for more battle breakdowns and ship reviews from a wide variety of videos and episodes. Thanks so much for watching, hope to see you next time and have a good one.